Chapter 23, Chase Ambrose At football practice, when everyone else is laboring under a ton of equipment, and you're breezing through the drills in shorts and a t-shirt, you're not the most popular guy in the field. All around me, the gridiron resounds with crunching tackles, oofs, and grunts of pain. But I'm immune to that. No contact for the first week of my comeback, middle school rules. My teammates managed to see to it that I suffered just the same. Around the Gatorade bucket, no drink in my hand makes it as far as my mouth. It's pretty clear the other players have determined that I'm not going to get so much as a sip as long as my special treatment holds up. Every time I've got a full cup, someone manages to jostle my elbow until the contents spill down my leg and into my cleats. It's been going on for three days now. I'm borderline dehydrated, and when I walk, my wet pants create squishing noises. Hey, pink! Coach Davenport calls, referring to the fruit punch color of my lower body. Get out there and catch some passes! I have no memory of what practice is supposed to be like, but I don't complain about the treatment and focus on doing my job. I guess playing football is like riding a bicycle. You never really forget how. I run hard, and after a couple of days, the cuts and jukes come back to me. More muscle memory. I make a few good grabs, and I can feel the guy's attitude thawing a little. Nice catch, Captain! Landon tells me with a slap where my shoulder pad would be if I was wearing one. I guess I'm still the captain. I didn't forfeit that by having amnesia. Yeah, good to have you back, adds Joey in a tone that could almost be interpreted as friendly. I try to turn this development to my advantage. Can I have a drink now? He laughs. Bathroom's in the field house, newbie. I hadn't thought of that. Pretty soon I'm in there, bent over the sink, guzzling water from the tap. It's better than drinking out of the toilet, which is probably what Joey had in mind. It takes a while, but Landon finally explains that this is the standard procedure for anyone who is on non-contact. As soon as I'm getting tackled like everybody else, my Gatorade privileges will be restored. Football. Here's a surprise. I like it. That means everything everything didn't change when I fell on my head. It proves that you can be an athlete and a video club kid at the same time. Not in my case, obviously. Video Club invited me to get lost. But it's possible to be both. I have no idea why more people don't do it. Maybe it's because the jocks will never find out if they enjoy doing something artsy because they'll never try it. And the art kids feel the same way about sports. In spite of everything that's happened, I'm getting the hang of most of the Hurricanes. They're a rowdy crew. And sometimes the physical nature of the game spills over into the way they treat other kids which is definitely not right. But they're giving me a chance, which is more than I can say for the video club these days. I'm starting to see how I could have been friends with the players, with two exceptions. Aaron and Bear finally have what they wanted. My name is Mud with my new friends, and I'm back on the team. But if they expect us to be the three musketeers again, they can forget it. They couldn't stand to see me making a life for myself that didn't include them. So they wrecked it for me. And in the process, they managed to retarget poor Joel who hasn't even been home for two weeks yet. And that's not including the way they treat the residents at Portland Street. But the last straw was when they cornered me, so I had no choice but to lie to Dr. Fitzwallis to protect the three of us. Aaron's always lecturing me about friendship. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. I don't talk to them. I don't stretch next to them. In the locker room, I sit so far away from them that I'm practically out in the hall. When we're on the practice field for the same drill... They get no chatter from me, not even in any eye contact. The other Hurricanes have started to notice, but they think it's funny. Aaron and Bear don't. And how much do I care about hurting their delicate feelings? Well, you could fit that inside the nucleus of a carbon atom. On Friday, Coach Davenport runs us through a quick workout. The Hurricanes have a night game tomorrow, and he wants everybody fresh but sharp. Since I won't be playing, he keeps me out on the field while the others clatter into the locker room. Ten laps, Pink, he calls. No dog in it. The others are laughing at me and calling out mock encouragement. Their revenge for my week of no pads. To show off, I kick into high gear and sprint down the sideline. One thing that's come out of the first week of practice, I've gotten really fast. None of my teammates are very impressed because apparently I was always this fast, but it's news to me. These days, I need something to make me feel good about myself. When the tackle comes, it's a complete shock. One second, I'm running free, and the next, a big body hits me just below the knees, knocking my legs out from under me and sending me hurling forward. 
I must somersault because I see a quick panorama of sky and grass. The earth comes up to clobber me. I think I eat some of it. Gasping, I roll over. A helmeted figure is blocking out the sun. Number 57, Bear. Aaron stands beside him, applauding. How's that for non-contact? Bear spits. I don't answer. I can't. The wind is totally knocked out of me. I just lie there, wheezing. Oops, he goes on, fake apologetic. I think that might have been contact. It's so confusing with you lately, Ambrose. You're a friend. You're an enemy. You're a teammate. You're a video dork. You've got amnesia. He grabs me by the fabric of my t-shirt and hauls me to my feet. Or maybe you remember more than you let on. I've got no pads on, I choke, finding breath at last. You want to kill me? It could happen, you know, and you'd get more than community service for that. We had to get your attention, man, Aaron informs me solemnly. You've barely said a word to us all week. Don't worry, we won't harm a hair on your little head, Bear adds. Not until we get square. Get square? I don't know if I've ever been so mad. Aren't we square yet? All my friends hate my guts because they think I set up what happened in the band room. Aaron grins. It wasn't too hard to convince them either. I guess we're not the only ones who figured out that the new Chase is a phony. What are you talking about? I sputter. You never had amnesia, Bear accuses harshly. You faked the whole thing. Are you crazy? I demand. What's so fantastic about forgetting your whole life that anybody would fake it? I didn't even know my own mother. Well, for one thing, Bear returns readily, you can act like you have no clue what you owe us. I owe you nothing, I seethe. The fact that I used to be friends with you guys makes me sick. If you think you can push me around the way you do everybody else, think again. There's still enough of the old chase left to take you on. You're lucky I don't go straight to the cops and rat you out for swiping Mr. Solway's medal. They stare at me in surprise. I can feel the advantage shifting to me, so I don't let up. Yeah, geniuses. I figured that out by watching you prowling the halls of Portland Street, taking advantage of the people you're supposed to be helping. Give me credit for having the brains to see who's sleazy enough to steal from a war hero who's too frail to look after his stuff. Bear is still staring, but slow, understanding is dawning on Aaron. You, you really do have amnesia, he tells me. Yeah, so? So you don't remember. We didn't jack that metal. You did. Rage floods through me, and I rear back my fist to take a swing at him. Before I can act, though, the memory flashes in my brain. The triangular case on the dresser flipped open to reveal the gleaming five-pointed Medal of Honor at the end of its blue star-spangled ribbon. A hand reaches down for it. My hand. I'm totally appalled, yet it makes perfect sense. Aaron and Bear are the worst people I know, but they weren't always a twosome. They had a ringleader, Chase Ambrose. And in those days, if they were low, he was lower. Even before the memory returned, I should have known I did it. Bear's words break into my horrified thoughts. That's right, Boy Scout. This one's on you. You didn't even wait till the old Dumbledore was out of the room. As soon as his back was turned, you snatched it and tossed the case in the closet. It's worth big money, and you owe us our share. Three-way split. That was our deal, Aaron confirms. If we were sentenced to the Greybeard Motel, at least we were going to get something out of it. I... I don't have it. Bear's brow darkens. Don't lie, man. I saw you jam it in your pocket and walk out of the building. No, I all but whisper. I mean, I might have it, but I don't know what I did with it. And if I do find it, it's going back to Mr. Solway. Maybe I used to be a crook, but I'm not one anymore. Aaron steps forward. Fine. You're better than us now. You're a saint. But when you took that medal, that was the old you and the old rules. So it belongs to all three of us. You can't do anything without our okay, and we don't give it. He looks totally serious like a lawyer reading a contract. You make a move without us, you'll regret it, Bear adds threateningly. 
I regret I ever met you guys, I shout, hoarse with emotion. I wheel away from them and flee for home, not even stopping in the locker room to shower and change. I have to put as much distance as possible between myself and those two. As I run, hot tears of shame are streaming down my face. Since my accident, I've heard a lot about the person I used to be. Never did I imagine this. I sprint harder, accelerating onto the sidewalk, outpacing even the most intense drills for practice. It's no problem escaping Aaron and Bear, but I'll never be able to get away from myself.